There are unlimited ways to get hurt, and they usually involve wheels, whether it's two wheels, four wheels, eight wheels, 18 wheels, and sometimes even one wheel. If you've been hurt, call me now. My daughter Dana fought a long battle with Crohn's disease before passing last year. Max has spent a lifetime scoring goals. It's our goal to help the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation find a cure for this horrible disease so no one else's child has to suffer like Dana did. Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis may be unfamiliar to you, but there are currently over three million Americans suffering from both. Join Max and I in scoring our goal to find a cure. It's the Ed Bernstein Show, Home Edition. Now, here's your host, Ed Bernstein. Hi, welcome to our show. Hey, you have a sore knee, a shoulder, other body part, you're just getting a little bit older, you know, you've done sports your whole life and now you're paying the price. Well, there's a solution and sometimes it does not involve surgery. With me today is Dr. Matt Otten, and Cell Axis is uh, the name of his company. And you do, uh, Dr. Otten, um, regenerative medicine. What does that mean? So specifically, Ed, uh, thank you for having me on the show today. Uh, specifically, what that is, is regenerative orthopedic sports medicine. Um, there's, a, there's been a big push in the last 15 years within the United States to avoid surgical interventions as much as possible. So there was a great study actually that came out of HSS, Hospital for Special Surgery, um, a few years ago that compared um, a placebo surgery to an arthroscopic intervention for the treatment of arthritis. And in this particular study, basically they both had the same outcomes. So with the advent of the newer technology and the more regenerative procedures that can reduce pain, improve range of motion and improve your function, there's been a big push away from surgery recently, probably in the last 10 years within the United States. So specifically what I've been working on over the last 12 years in private practice is options that are available that utilize your own body's ability to heal itself concentrating those potential cells or platelets, whatever they may be, and transplanting them back into the, a location of injury, pain, or arthritis to improve your range of motion, pain, and function, and basically get you playing and active again. Can your body heal itself um, totally, or is it, it just makes it better, or it gives you improvement, or there's gradations of everything? So there's gradations on absolutely everything that you mentioned there, because we're talking about arthritic conditions. We're talking about, so bone and cartilage, which is basically arthritis. Um, arthritis is the degradation or loss of articular cartilage. That's what technically arthritis is as well as a cascade of inflammatory uh, properties and, and other things that I won't bother to get into. It's a little complicated, but then you range from tendons. And if you have partially torn tendons, um, such as the rotator cuff, which is a problem for a lot of people with the shoulder, um, these procedures can actually heal those particular situations. With regards to arthritis, uh, you can improve the function of the, um, of the articular cartilage and then you, you can improve the articular cartilage itself. And I'll talk about clinical data if you want me to, uh, to actually get you feeling better, not only feeling better, but actually doing better from a, from a biomechanical uh, standpoint as well. A lot of these procedures you're talking about regard um, um, either PRP or stem cells. It's a matter of taking out plasma or stem cells uh, from your own body, right? And Correct. I guess there are alternatives, so you, you can grab them from somewhere else. But, but, uh, and then um, taking them out. Um, well, you you can explain the process in a minute. You you do a process of spinning process. Take the plasma out, and you reinsert it into the body part. 
giving supernatural healing ability to mm -hmm. those body parts, right? Yeah, that's exactly it. It's basically, the, it's basically delivering um, the healing components that your body actually innately has and placing them where they need to be placed, which they wouldn't normally go there anyways, uh, to heal tissue. Uh, and in the, and what you mentioned earlier was um, how, how to do it. So that's, that's a really important aspect. Uh, you have to do this not as a shotgun approach, but you have to do this more as a sniper approach. So you really have to be focused where you place these stem cells. Um, forgive me if I'll say mesenchymal stem cells occasionally during this conversation, because mesenchymal stem cells is the actual cell that we're looking for. Um, so you have to place them with very, very specific locations. Because you hear everybody talking about PRP and, um, and stem cells. What are the differences between those two? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I get asked this on a daily basis in clinic. Uh, so there's a wider range of options available. Uh, that's the first thing to understand. There are options that we call autologous, meaning they come from yourself. And there's three main options, three big main options for that. The first one is going to be PRP or some sort of derivative of PRP. So PRP is the first one that comes from your platelets. The second one is going to be a stem cell component or so taking your own stem cells, harvesting those, concentrating them and transplanting that. Those stem cells, specifically the mesenchymal stem cells, are gonna come from one of two locations in orthopedic sports and spine medicine. The first place that it's gonna come from is your bone marrow. And the second place that you can obtain these is through your adipose tissue, so your actual fat. And fat is becoming a, it used to be a not a very well-known uh, procedure. It used to be used worldwide. Uh, it's, it's approved um, in about 100 different countries around the world internationally, but within the US, it's really made a, um, a big push and there's been a large popularity surge within probably the last seven years. Let me uh, also be a little bit more specific because I've had these procedures done with you. So I'm, I'm quite familiar with them because I do have arthritis in uh, my knee or whatever else, however else you want to diagnose it. Um, but it's old <laughs> and, um, and it hurts at times and uh, it ran a lot of miles in, in, in its day. Um, and what you did was you um, essentially um, took some blood from my arm you um, took a few vials of blood. You have a machine in your office where you spin it, you separate out the, the PRP, which by the way is a platelet rich plasma. Plasma, correct, okay. correct. And, um, and then what came out in a vial as red or apparently looks like red blood <laughs> um, um, comes back in kind of a, kind of a, uh, what is it, like a yellowish uh, kind of color? It, uh, it looks just a plasma. Correct. Then you, then you hooked me up to a, a, an ultrasound machine. Mm -hmm. So you can see where you, exactly you needed to inject the plasma. You then took, um, put the plasma into, uh, in, into a, um, a needle. What's the proper term? Syringe, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Good enough. No worries. <laughs> and, um, and then injected into my, well, first you gave, gave me a little bit of uh, uh, anesthesia, right? Correct. I like to use a little bit of, there's two options you can do because you want to make these comfortable. These can hurt. So I'll either use a little bit of lidocaine topically, um, or if I'm actually going to be utilizing something where I want to numb up the actual specific location, I'll use something called ropivacaine because you're right. You want to make these comfortable. So a little bit of anesthesia, correct? Right, and then the actual injection of the plasma, I don't know, it's less than 30 seconds to, to do it. And, and quite, I, I guess, you know, look, everybody accepts these kind of um, procedures differently. I could tell you my own personal story and I've had it done a few times. Um, um, is, is that, um, and I wanna ask you about the number of times in a minute, so keep that in mind. But um, I was able to, you know, walk out of your office. In fact, uh, 
maybe I shouldn't admit this to you, but I was actually, would go on a stationary bike later in the afternoon and work out. <laughs> Most <laughs> people do. <laughs> oh, they do? Okay. Yeah. I, I thought you kind of told me, hey, rest it for a day, but. <laughs> kind of give it up. <laughs> yeah, but this is not a one-time cure, correct? Correct. So a very important thing. So there's two, there's two answers to your question. The first one is PRP. So when you do PRP, PRP has been well documented with regards to arthritis. And let's focus on arthritis in this next talk um, because so many people have it and so many, there's so limited options to do. So with PRP and arthritis, it's been well documented that PRP has a very potent anti-inflammatory effect. So it's basically like using, it's basically like using your own body's cortisone. So it's a long lasting anti-inflammatory. For some people, it can be up to three to five years. For other people, it, it can be you know, six to eight months. It's, it's variant upon the severity of the arthritis and how each individual person reacts. So PRP is a very good anti-inflammatory that you'll need or want to do occasionally. Stem cells is a little bit different. So if you catch a patient early enough in the course of arthritis, stem cells can actually improve the quality and health of the articular cartilage to the extent where you really don't need to do anything for about seven to 10 years. Mm -hmm. If you catch them mid midway or moderately advanced arthritis, those patients can have improvement for about three to five years. So the earlier you catch, um, an arthritic condition and take care of it and treat it, stem cells will last a long time. PRP will last anywhere from one to three years in, is a general rule of thumb. And I think if you globalize that, and I'll, I'll let you get finish up with this. I think if you globalize that, stem cells tend to last. So if I do your own stem cells, the average duration of improvement tends to be about three to seven years. And that can be a significant reduction in pain ranging from anywhere from 50% reduction all the way up to about 80% reduction. And, and the procedure is entirely different with the PRP and the stem cell. With the PRP, it could be in and out of your office within an hour and you know, enjoy the rest of my day, no problemo. Correct. But the, uh, the stem cell is a little bit different. Why don't you describe what the procedure is on a stem cell? Sure. So there's two big ones. Um, I'll talk about bone marrow. Uh, bone marrow is quick and painless, actually, believe it or not. Um, I, we have an anesthesiologist uh, who, who I utilize in my clinic specifically for this purpose. Uh, when you harvest bone marrow, that can be pretty darn painful. Um, so I like to I like to perform everything with the help of an anesthesiologist. So it's comfortable. It takes about an hour. You harvest a little bit of bone marrow, isolate the stem cells from that bone marrow, combine it and activate it with a little bit of PRP, and then you transplant it. So as far as pain is concerned, there's not a lot of pain afterwards. You're sore uh, for about three to five days. When you utilize adipose tissue or fat, now that's a bit, that's a different procedure. That's a bigger procedure. It takes about one and a half to two hours. You have to do a mini liposuction. Usually you do the belly. It's not a two for one. That's the other question everyone asks is how much weight do you lose? You don't lose a ton. Uh, <laughs> um, so you have to do a mini liposuction. You combine the stem cells with PRP and then you transplant that that particular procedure leaves you sore from anywhere from about seven to 10 days. Not terrible. You're going to the grocery store, you know, you're cooking, you're cleaning, but you're not going to want to go run a marathon. And what is the difference in making a determination of what type of procedure somebody would need? Ah, great question. Uh, so this is a question that I, that I get faced with every single day in clinic. Um, and over the course of the last 12 years in my practice, I've found certain things work better for other, thing, uh, other, other issues. So the first issue is age. The older you get, the more heavily I recommend adipose tissue because adipose stem cells have been shown to be viable up until you're about 80 years old at a very high concentration and a very consistent concentration up until you're about 80. After that, 80, it begins to fat? die off. Is that the fat? That's for the fat. Yeah. Okay. That's for the fat. Bone marrow tends to die off after about 65 or older. So if you're a younger patient with an isolated problem, 
I tend to use bone marrow stem cells. If you're an older patient with multiple problems that wants two knees done and two shoulders done or four or five major uh, body parts done on the same procedure, I'll use adipose tissue. I'm a little bit familiar with um, this procedure as well because um, my daughter had the, the stem cell procedure, right? The adipose. She did. And um, she had an Achilles problem mm -hmm. that just wouldn't heal. I mean, she was a cheerleader when she was young. She spent years in a boot. I mean, she would wear a, 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 a foot boot and, um, and have cortisone injections and things like that to, to no relief. Then she went to see you. And uh, you tried the PRP first. Mm -hmm. It had some, you know, short-term, immediate uh, relief, but not long, not long-lasting. Um, I don't know exactly the terminology of what was wrong with her Achilles tendon, but I sh certainly know how painful an mm -hmm. Achilles injury is. I mean, she was in tears uh, oftentimes because it's so painful. Um, so we know, you want to describe what's involved in that kind of procedure and why you, and why it works and why you recommended the procedure you did. Yeah, absolutely. So she's a great case. Um, she was one of those cases where I switched over to adipose tissue, even though she's a young, healthy female. Um, a lot of the times I'll use bone marrow in those cases, but specifically in a, in, in a condition that has a large amount of inflammatory processes going on, which is Achilles tendonitis, these things hurt. Uh, I've had it personally. I've treated it for years. It is a it is a terrible, terrible issue to have. It takes forever to go away. It, the first step you take out of bed, uh, you're hunched over and doubled over in pain. It's 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 a debilitating injury, and there's not a heck of a lot of fixes for it. Um, so in her specific case, I wanted to use adipose tissue because of two reasons. The first is. Adipose tissue has a tremendous amount of live viable mesenchymal stem cells, anywhere from 200 million to 500 million. So that's the first reason you get this huge, huge amount of stem cells. The second reason why I did it was because adipose tissue actually has a mild to moderate anti-inflammatory effect that can be long lasting as well. So if you're in what we call an acute pain, or it hurts now and it hurts a lot and it's been hurting for a while, I use adipose tissue because it has an anti-inflammatory effect and you get this huge volume of stem cells. The other reason why I wanted to use your daughter's um, adipose tissue is because adipose stem cells will multiply or self-replicate about eight times before they differentiate. Whereas bone marrow stem cells will only multiply about five times before they differentiate. So what's that mean? So not only, so differentiation is where they become tendon cells. A stem cell be, actually turns into a tendon cell called a tenocyte. So that's what differentiation is. Um, and multiplication is when they self-replicate. So not, so when they self-replicate, they literally just self, they divide. And so you get, so if you have one stem cell, uh, if you start with one stem cell, in the case of adipose tissue, you oftentimes can end up with eight stem cells before they become, you know, tendon cells, bone cells, cartilage cells. And so that's why I used adipose. You get a ton of cells, you get a huge amount of multiplication to add to that, and you get a moderate anti-inflammatory effect utilizing adipose tissue. Yeah, I, yeah I, I'm trying to recall how long ago it was, maybe two, three years ago, I, three? She had, um, the procedure. And she's been pain-free, working out. I mean, it's, it's been a blessing for her, and it's worked uh, for her. Um, it's great to hear. And full disclosure, I didn't ask you before we went yeah. on. <laughs> <laughs> um, what, what body parts can you actually use with stem cells and or PRP? A great question. Um, so let me first say this. There is, I, I've, been, I, I've been getting these questions, you know, can I use stem cells to treat COVID and, and, um, uh, and, and, and brain uh, issues, so TBIs or history of strokes. Mm -hmm. uh, and the way that you treat, the way that you theoretically treat these issues is through IV therapy. Uh, it's important to delineate that there has not been any good clinical studies on this. 
there is no proven benefit of injecting your stem cells through the IV. Uh, so I tend not to do that and I tend not to recommend that. Uh, anything that I do is clinically proven, has been documented and has clinical evidence behind it. So that's the first thing, because I get asked that a lot. Um, so the main things I think that we tend to treat in my particular clinic, and then I'll also talk about some spine stuff as well. Uh, the main things we get is arthritis knee arthritis, hip arthritis, and then of course, shoulders, rotator cuff, partial tears, not full thickness, but partial tears, shoulder arthritis, uh, those issues. So any location with arthritis is a potential treatable ailment. Any issue with a partial tendon tear or a high grade long standing tendonitis, which we call tendinopathy. So anything with tendon issues, muscle issues, or arthritis can be treated in orthopedics and sports medicine. With regards to spine, um, I'm, I don't do spine medicine, but obviously I've been involved in this field long enough, so I can give you a generalized answer. Um, disc pain can be treated with these procedures, facet pain. Um, globally, what we consider low back pain is often very well treated with these procedures because the only alternative you have is cortisone um, or potentially surgical interventions, which everyone wants to avoid on the spine. Um, so there's an array of different options that can be treated in the spine as well. And cortisone, although it seems to work uh, very well um, um, in, you know, immediately, um, it, it, your body can only handle so much of it, correct? I mean, it's a steroid and you can only have so many injections before it becomes a problem. 100%. It's actually been well, well known in the medical field. Uh, the more you get, the more you're actually doing damage ultimately to that joint or location that you're injuring. It weakens tendons. Um, it weakens, uh, it, 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 it's chondrolytic. So it actually hurts the, the cartilage cells. So you really don't want to do this. And I think a good example of that is the rupture that you hear. So you always hear about weightlifters rupturing one of their big tendons, their Achilles, patella, quadricep tendons. Oftentimes that can be a direct result of having a relatively recent cortisone injection. Um, so yes, the cortisone is not the best medicine. Uh, it's, there's been a large push away from the utilization of cortisone uh, in medicine uh, over the last five years. And patients are really beginning to understand this and, and, and become educated on that. So they're looking for alternatives. Now you hear in, around uh, the, uh, particularly with uh, some women, that they're going, you're getting these vampire facials, mm -hmm. um, which involves PRP. Right. It's 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 the same kind of process. Take pee, you take the blood out of somebody and somebody's arm and you spin it and come out with the plasma and then you inject the plasma into their face. And is that has that been proven successful? Oh, yeah, that's actually. Yeah. <laughs> um, the reason why I know about this is this comes up at every single, you know, orthopedic sports medicine <laughs> talk because everyone always asks about this. Everyone's like, so just, a, you know, for, I'm asking for a friend. Um, <laughs> and now it's like it's a big thing within dermatology and yeah. plastic surgery. Uh, yeah, it's, it's really well documented. And the key words with that is collagen, collagen, collagen. So collagen creates elasticity in our skin and as we age, I can't believe I'm talking about this. I know this stuff. Um, as, as we age, we lose our collagen and that's what leaves that droopy or look and you don't have that fresh spring in your skin. So if you actually inject uh, PRP and we're actually using stem cells now, um, if you actually inject PRP, it stimulates the proliferation or growth of collagen and can really rejuvenate your skin. So it, it really does work. So for the women out there that are somewhat interested in it, absolutely it falls in the same, it falls in the same line of talking that I've done this past, you know, 20, 30 minutes where it really does help regenerate tissues. And how about for uh, the bald guys? Well, uh, <laughs> how do I say this tactfully? We may have missed your window ad by a few years. <laughs> <laughs> um, but if you catch it early, absolutely. Uh, it's, there's really, really good science out there with it. So dermatologists who do hair, uh, dermatologists picked up on this about five to 10 years ago where they said, look, why don't we do this? The sports guys are doing this. And there's some, if you catch it early enough um, and you do it, as you said, 
kind of on a semi-regular basis, you can really, really stimulate your follicles to grow, be stronger, thicker, and denser. Like there, it's really, there's some excellent clinical evidence out there for that. Dr. Otten, this seems to me like a no-brainer. You have a, a knee or a, a, a hip or a shoulder issue. I mean, why not try this instead of surgery? To me, it's a no-brainer, but, but I, I guess part of the, the answer to that is maybe insurance. Yeah. So this is a covered benefit. That's a great, uh, this is important for everyone to know that's listening out there because this, this is the big, big caveat to these whole procedures. Um, insurance does not cover it at this time. There's a handful of insurances. So if you play in the NFL or you have a, an executive insurance plan, oftentimes this will be covered because they, or workman's compensation because they realize the cost benefit in this. Um, so insurances as a global whole do not cover these procedures. Um, and it depends on what you're doing, but they can run anywhere from $1,000, you know, or if you go to Beverly Hills, these things can go about $20,000. I think on average, it would be, uh, you should expect to consider somewhere between $5,000 and, and $10,000 for one of these procedures for the big uh, stem cell procedures. Um, but they aren't covered yet. That being said, the VA is actually offering adipose stem cells to a patient population that meets their criteria and is covering these procedures. So there is a big push from insurance companies uh, to begin to cover these. In fact, right before we got on here, Ed, I was reviewing a clinical trial, a phase one and two clinical trial um, article that I'm writing for a clinical trial because the company wants to compare this procedure with a total knee arthroplasty because it, it saves the company so much money. Not only does it save them money, you have a much happier patient population because they don't have to go through these big arduous procedures. So ironically, when I get off with you, that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm, I'm submitting a uh, FDA approval for a clinical study. Yeah. So it's, once again, it's a matter of the insurance industry catching up with, with the science. It is. Uh, the other thing, I'm not sure if I should say this, you may want to edit this well, out. We've got, we got about 30 seconds. Okay. So. The other thing you may want to say about this, I may, you may want to edit this out is it's the lobbyists. The lobbyists for these companies that create knee replacements have really fought hard against these procedures because they lose money. Well, look, I mean, look, we can talk about that issue. Uh, that's a whole other show. You can edit that. <laughs> okay, well, um, you can reach, uh, you can reach uh, Dr. Otten at uh, Cell Axis, and we'll have the, the websites uh, on your screen. So take a look at it. Thank you so much, Dr. Otten. And hey, and you're at the cutting edge with some great stuff. So thank you very much. Thank you very much for your time, Ed. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. And we'll see you next week. My daughter Dana fought a long battle with Crohn's disease before passing last year. Max has spent a lifetime scoring goals. It's our goal to help the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation find a cure for this horrible disease so no one else's child has to suffer like Dana did. Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis may be unfamiliar to you, but there are currently over 3 million Americans suffering from both. Join Max and I in scoring our goal to find a cure.